Right now, you're probably confused, bewildered, and wondering why an Iranian Cobra is engaging German World War II forces. But that is the power of the battle editor, the sandbox that is in Graviteam Tactics, one of the most overlooked and underappreciated features in this game. And in today's video, I'm going in depth and doing a quick breakdown on how you can create battles similar to what you're seeing here. So if you ever have a fantasy or a tactical situation that you want to recreate, live out, and just have a blast playing, I guarantee this video is for you. And it was a blast to make. One of the best things about the battle editor is that you do not need to own all the DLCs in order to use them in this mode. The DLCs are a scripted campaign that's sold to you. That's what you're buying. The units and the maps are all available to you in the battle editor. There are some limitations. There are a few DLCs that are not in the battle editor. So that's something you need to figure out for yourself. It's generally the pre-1939 pre-war tanks that are not available. But overall, I really want you to think of fun tactical situations that you can create in this system. And this is where I spend a lot of my time as a content creator, is in the battle editor. And this is how I test mechanics and features in the game. So if you're an aspiring content creator or just someone who's interested in Graviteam Tactics, watch this video. You're going to enjoy it. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we're taking a look at the sandbox that's known as the battle editor, my favorite area and my favorite playground. So if you really enjoyed that intro, watching that Cobra engage those World War II troops, I guarantee you're going to enjoy this video. And I'm going to show you how to recreate or create a battle similar to that in the battle editor. So I'm going to try and do a speed run through this, keep the video down to five minutes. My last videos were like 20 minutes long, so I'm gonna reduce it a little bit. So when you click on the battle editor, you're going to come to this change battle settings or this battle menu. If you want to adjust your ch battle settings, you'd come select right here. I'm really only going to go over this top portion because there's really no need. All this can be adjusted inside the game and I'll show you how to do that or inside the battle editor. At the top, you just pick player and enemy side. Generally, you can pick whoever you want to be. I have Iran versus Germany. Game mode default. I'm not going to go too much into a lot of the specifics on these, mostly because it's really light on the manual on what a lot of these words mean. So generally, I, this is just the settings I use. I keep everything at attack, default. Obviously, you can just do minimal casualties is something I generally do a lot of. Um, time of day speaks for itself it's time of day battle duration obviously compressed two hours weather forecast and then this is i'm just generally going to focus on the main main things so we're going to go into the battlefield here we can just select a different battlefield so let's go right here to the lomba river and then obviously we have germany this time doesn't really matter matter we're just going to select 1942 um, and i'll show you how to adjust that obviously you can have all units or historical only and then you can select the season all right here we have a map, fun little forested area. Here we have a small urban environment. And then we're going to pick our battleground. So I generally dropped it right there because I like these small, like this three by three square. And I want to assault that urban area right there. The next thing we'd do is we'd select our battle layout. As you see that it changes the amount of units. So on each one of these docks, dots or battle positions, you can only place one unit. So that's a bummer for those people who want to recreate those massive, massive battles inside the campaign. But also you have access to all the units and, and maps in the battle editor. So there's a small little trade off. Um, so you don't always need to buy all the DLCs if you want to explore something. So generally this is just how you would change your battlefield right here. So we're just going to go with that. Set up triggers. Um, it's just if you hover over it, it tells you exactly what it means. So let's go click. Let's just place a unit right here. Down here is how we would place select our time period. Since we're Iran and Iraq, we need to go up to the 1980s, find our units, bring this back, and we're just going to place like a tank. All right, now if we wanted like to set this unit needs to be destroyed, we'd set up triggers. Actually, since this is um, our tank, we're red. It means that Chevron means this tank needs to survive or this platoon. And if we wanted to identify what vehicle this was, we'd right, we'd hold control and we'd right click. Actually, we need to go back to the unit identifier. Hold control, right click. Here's all kinds of information. Um, you can set this to whatever your liking is, obviously. Um, it just generally allows you to, but you don't need to do that for every single unit. It's just up to you on how you want to do that. 
This right here is mainly the more important area, reinforce strategy. If you wanted to add a unit or remove a unit, you would do that right here. This unit list is really important for um, World War II artillery because certain spotters, they're not assigned as an artillery battery for some reason, and you need to assign it in the battle editor. Very strange, whereas some of the modern DLCs are already assigned. It just depends. Each one's different, so it's always good to check. Obviously, and then last thing, since it just says tank platoon over there on the right-hand side on the platoon, if we really want to see what vehicle it is, we can see it's an, a Chieftain MK5. See, tank platoon right here, one platoon. We know this is a Chieftain MK5. And now let's go. And so if we want to do that, and let's say we want to do our enemy now. The blue flag is our enemy. You can also place allied units as well. So if you wanted to have an allied attack with you in a combined arms assault or joint assault, you can do that as well. So let's click on our blue, which is the enemy unit. Let's go back to our time scale. And let's go back to 1943, right there. And here's all of our units. And here's our artillery spotter. So let's go more into depth in this artillery spotter, because this is what a lot of people will be using this for, is mastering how to use artillery or command lines, things like that. So let's hold control, right click this unit. And this is what I was talking about. Right here, see how there's no artillery battery assigned? We have our battery commander, we have our squad with a telephone, but we have no specific weapon system assigned to this. So if we clicked on reinforce strategy, it's now assigned us a 15 centimeter battery, or we could click random, fixed, and it's going to assign us the 10 centimeter battery, then we we'll go back to fixed, and now we have the fixed 10 centimeter battery. That's really important to note because if we grabbed our air spotter and did the exact same thing, see? Infantry commander, squad, we now need to assign an aircraft to this air spotter. Same thing, reinforce support or none. And then we can have F FW-190s or we can have JU-87s, which will conduct bombing runs. All right, really something to make note of. And then next, let's say we wanted to drop some tanks, just medium tank platoons all along here. We could put like two of these units in a group. So we left click one, right click the other. That adds into a group. If we wanted to get rid of this group, we would right click this icon over here. So left click, right click. Then we can come click right here on create paths. And we can have this unit do an assault onto our tank. And then we could also like have them do follow on things. If we were playing along this whole map, they would assault all along that vector. The AI generally assaults on roadways, things like that, depending on what kind of order you give them. We go back to create groups. We can give this guy a group as well, and we want him to move up and defend this area. And then right, we can do the same thing with him. He can assault along that same vector if he wanted to, or we can just do nothing. And if we want to get rid of this, oh, we made a mistake. We'd right click all of these, and now he's no longer doing that. Or we could just do things like that. And then we can also do our triggers. Um, I don't use these a lot. You just right click. That means if it's in a neutral area, it needs to be captured by either party. Dash means it's secondary. Right click. And then if we click on this unit, it means this unit's going to defend it. Same thing, secondary. What's going on right there? It's putting an X. So if we come off, that means we need to eliminate that platoon. So whatever platoon this is would need to be eliminated. Right? Overall, that's just realistically, I mean, a real brief overview on how you use the battle editor or how I use it a lot. I think it's something you guys would enjoy. And I really just wanted to show you guys a fun little sandbox that's in Gravity Team Tactics. All right, guys, real short video. Catch you later. Peace out.